we are going to deal about hip bone okay as you know this is a human skeleton so in skeleton we are dealing with the lower limb region so in the lower limb we have got first hip bone then after we have got two articulation of hip bone together it is forming pelvis region below that we have got the femur and then we have got tibia and then tarsal bones are seen now we are going to deal only about the hip bones which is a bilateral bone which is seen on either side of the body so here if you are seeing the hip bone we have got side determination to find out the anatomical position and the side determination of hip bone we have got some properties to take care of so first if you are having a plane okay a plane should be drawn at this level where anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle should be at the same plane okay this two should be at the same plane that is anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle should be placed at the same plane so if you are getting a hip bone you have to tilt little then only you will get this plane correspondingly which is going to form equal uh, going to deal about this whole pelvis in a separate class so before that just to understand this part after articulation this whole part is called as true pelvis and this whole part is called as false pelvis okay now we are going to see the individual bone that is hip bone close up when so we are going to see about the individual hip bone today so talking about the hip bone as i said to see the anatomical position always this is the hip bone so this hip bone should be placed little oblique and downwards so this is the proper positioning you should not keep like this okay it should be little turn downwards having the plane passing between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle at the same level okay so this is the normal position of the hip bone so like this you have to hold the hip bone in position and then for finding out the side determination as you know it is a bilateral bone it is seen on either right side and also in the left side so to find out the proper side whether it is right or left we have got some properties such as this is the ilium part okay the whole of the hip bone has three parts one is ilium which is seen in the above part and in the lower part we have got two okay one is anteriorly we have got pubis and the posterior aspect we have got ischium okay this is ischium and this is pubis and this is the ilium part so these are the three parts of hip bone we have got so this is the normal position and then after keeping all these three in proper positioning you have to see laterally in the lateral aspect you have got acetabulum okay this is the acetabulum of the hip bone which is seen in the lateral aspect so it have to face laterally and one more thing while you are holding the hip bone always try to keep your thumb finger here one notch will be seen in the posterior aspect this is greater sciatic notch so your thumb you have to place near with inner side of the greater sciatic notch and outside to it covering the acetabulum keep your other fingers so this will be considered as normal position of the hip bone okay if you are trying to hold it in left okay this is a right sided hip bone if you are trying to hold this in left hand what will happen the thumb finger will go outwards okay and if you are holding like this also it will be not in proper positioning so always keep your thumb finger and thumb finger should go in the inner aspect the notch is where you are going to place your thumb finger and the other finger should cover the acetabulum so this is the normal positioning of the hip bone we have got okay so now above part if you are seeing you have got a crest over here and this crest is known as iliac crest okay and here in the lower part one more foramen will be seen that we will call as obturator foramen these are the things you have to remember for holding the hip bone in proper anatomical position okay now we are going to see about the feature of all these three parts of the hip bone detailing okay so we are going to deal about hip bone three parts are there as i said upper part this one we will call as ilium this whole part is called as ilium and here we have got pubis and posteriorly this whole part is called as ischia and all these three bones that is pubis ischia and the ilium all together are joining in a cup shaped cavity that we will call as acetabulum okay it is going to be similar like glenoid cavity which you have studied in upper limb okay in upper limb glenoid cavity is going to contribute for shoulder joint here the acetabulum is going to contribute for the hip joint okay 
so now first we are going to deal about ilium okay about this ilium we are going to deal this whole thing about ilium we are going to deal so to talking about ilium we have got some parts such as we have got two ends that is upper end and the lower end okay we have got two ends upper end and the lower end and then we have got three borders such as anterior border this whole thing is anterior border and this is medial border so this whole thing is anterior and this is medial border and here we have got posterior border okay so three borders are there two ends are there upper end lower end three borders anterior border medial border and posterior border and then we have got three surfaces again between the anterior border and the medial border in the inner aspect we have got one fossa okay this surface is called as iliac fossa or iliac surface so this is iliac fossa then after between the medial border and the posterior border here this whole part is called as sacro pelvic surface so this is iliac fossa and this is sacro pelvic surface and here in the posterior aspect this whole part is called as gluteal surface okay so this is gluteal surface and this is iliac fossa and this is sacro pelvic surface so three surfaces three borders and two ends okay upper end lower end anterior border medial border posterior border iliac fossa sacro pelvic surface and the gluteal surface now moving on to the ends we have got upper end here right so this is the upper end which is going to be present between here one tubercle you can see okay on small elevation which we will call as anterior superior iliac spine anteriorly placed upper part so anterior superior ilium so iliac spine anterior superior iliac spine and here we have got posterior superior iliac spine between joining these two we have got this crest present so we are calling the upper end of ilium as iliac crest okay so upper end is called as iliac crest and this iliac crest will be again divided into two parts such as ventral two third and dorsal one third okay so here here will be the division this part so ventral two third this part and posterior one third okay dorsal one third this is the two parts of the iliac crest so in the ventral two third again from the anterior superior iliac spine 5 cm behind this part you have got an elevation okay this elevation is called as pubic tubercle okay this elevation which is present 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine we will call that as iliac tubercle okay and now in the anterior two third we have got three lips present one is outer lip and then intermediate area and then we have got inner lip okay so in the ventral two third we have got three parts outer lip intermediate area and the inner lip now we have got some muscles attached to it such as we have got fascia lata from outside to inward i am telling from outside we have got fascia lata and then we have got tensor fascia lata then we have got three muscles external oblique internal oblique and then we have got transverse abdominus muscle again fascia transversalis will be attached okay all these will be attached to the ventral two third of iliac crest from outside to inwards okay now moving on to dorsal one third this is dorsal one third so in the dorsal one third again will be divided by a ridge okay again it will be divided by a ridge into outer part and the inner part the outer part here we have got attachment of gluteus maximus in the inner part we have got attachment of erector spinae okay so we have talked about iliac crest which is having a sinuous shape which is again divided into ventral two third and dorsal one third ventral two third have got a iliac tubercle this is the elevation iliac tubercle and the muscle attachments you have to remember in the dorsal one third we have got a ridge dividing into outer and inner aspect outer one gluteus maximus inner part giving attachment to erector spinae okay over moving on to the lower end so in the lower end of the ilium it is going to join with the pubis and ischium okay it is going to continue with pubis and ischium in the posterior part of this only we have got this acetabulum about acetabulum we will deal detail okay 
then after here we have got an eminence okay we have got iliopubic eminence so this eminence is called as iliopubic eminence and here you have got a line okay so this line which is present in the lower end is nothing but arcuate line so this line is called as arcuate line over for the lower end moving on to the borders first we are going to see about anterior border so as you know this is the anterior border anterior border will be having two projections one is above that is anterior superior iliac spine and the one is below this is anterior inferior sorry anterior inferior iliac spine so now in the anterior superior iliac spine we have got two attachments one is a muscle that is sartorius and one the one is a ligament called inguinal ligament okay then in anterior inferior iliac spine we have got attachment of straight head of rectus femoris only one muscle will be attached here that is straight head of rectus femoris so we are talking about anterior border anterior superior iliac spine anterior inferior iliac spine anterior superior iliac spine two attachment one ligament that is inguinal ligament one muscle that is sartorius muscle in the anterior inferior iliac spine we have got attachment of only one structure that is straight head of rectus femoris and moving on to the medial border this is the medial border so this medial border again dividing the two surfaces iliac fossa and sacro pelvic surface which is what going to continue as arcuate line okay this arcuate line is nothing but continuation of this medial border and then posteriorly here we have got posterior border so this posterior border again we have got a spine over here that is posterior superior iliac spine and here we have got another spine called posterior inferior iliac spine now this posterior inferior iliac spine again it is going to continue behind this posterior border reaching the spine called ischial spine so this is a spine called ischial spine till here it is going to continue and reach so this is ischial spine this is posterior superior iliac spine posterior inferior iliac spine and ischial spine between the posterior inferior iliac spine and the ischial spine we have got a notch and this notch is called as greater sciatic notch okay and then what um okay so these are the three borders now we are moving on to the surfaces so first surface which we have is iliac fossa so between the anterior border and the medial border this whole surface is which is concave we will call this as iliac fossa here we have got one muscle attachment that is iliacus muscle okay the muscle attached to the iliac fossa is iliacus muscle okay iliacus muscle and then we have got this part as sacro pelvic surface okay in the sacro pelvic surface the upper part this whole part okay this whole part the above okay this part is called as ischial tuberosity sorry iliac tuberosity i'm sorry we have got this between the medial border and posterior border we have got a part which is again divided above and below the upper part this one we will call as ili 